What's up, people? Thor Dykow back with another thrilling edition of this week on Blu-ray and DVD. We begin with the box office sensation, Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues. And this is Will Ferrell, Paul Rudd, Steve Carell, and the rest of the news team back for more. And they take on the 80s and the first ever 24-hour news channel. Check it out. We've got a job in New York City. Hey, Rod, who's driving? It's okay. It's on cruise control. Why do you have this bag of bowling balls in this terrarium filled with scorpions? It's a crazy story. Cruise control just regulates speed. It doesn't steer. <laughs> he says we're all gonna die. If you like me, There you go. You didn't think they could pull it off and be as funny as the first one, but amazingly they do. It doesn't quite have the originality or I guess the uh, simple story that the first one did, but I mean, it's the sequel. It's going to be bigger. It's going to be badder. And man alive, Paramount has done something fascinating here. You get a four disc combo pack with the Blu-ray release. And here's what you get. The original theatrical version of the film, the unrated version, and in a first home entertainment ever inaugural thing, a supersized R-rated version with what they boast 763 new jokes. So, sorry, it's a three-disc set, three-disc, not four, but you get over four hours of bonus features, including commentary from uh, director Adam McKay, Judd Apatow, and the rest of the cast. It is amazing. Christina Applegate comes back along with uh, James Martin, Marsden, he makes an appearance, Kristen Wiig, a lot of great hilarious celebrity cameos, but man, you get three versions of the film, so that alone is worth picking this thing up on Blu-ray. And I was astounded at the way they were able to actually go in and replace all the jokes for that supersized R-rated version to give you the wackiest and raunchiest of the news team. So there you go. They've taken on the 80s in Anchorman 2. The legend continues. Don't miss it. That's definitely our top pick, the big one of the week. Next, we are going to talk about Keanu Reeves in 47 Ronin. And this is a take on the classic Japanese tale of early 18th century feudal Japan when treacherous warlords kill a band of leaderless samurai's master so they seek vengeance and try to reclaim their honor. Have a look. We believe you are the only one who can help us. Their army is infinite. We are 47. If we do this, there's no coming back. <laughs> Yeah, this one looks like it has some potential, and despite some interesting choreography and some good fight scenes, it really strikes out, uh, particularly in the writing department. And I hate to say it, but Keanu Reeves is just so wooden and plays the exact same character that he always does. So I think it would have benefited from a more charismatic lead. The other issue, too, is that they have some great Japanese actors in this film who are clearly struggling with the English language. So a lot of the dialogue is, frankly, hard to understand. I wish they had just opted for subtitles in a lot of it um, because it, it's really hard to follow. So uh, despite some good special effects and some fantasy elements, this one really strikes out. It becomes a bit of a cliche shade mess though if you like the sort of eye candy and the b-movie quality of it you might enjoy it and there are some interesting bonus features on the blu-ray including uh, a feature that explores the intense research and choreography that went into it myths magic and monsters the fx of 47 ronin and exclusive to the 3d blu-ray you also get reforging the legend the story of the 47 ronin and how it became one of japan's most time-honored legends but this one was quite forgettable i hate to say it at the end of the day so i don't know take it or leave it 47 Running full of eye candy, but not much else at the end of the day. Next, we're talking about a very good film, and this is called The Past from the director of A Separation, which was the best foreign language film in 2012. And this stars Bernice Bejo, who you may recall from The Artist. And it's about two people who go to France. Well, she lives there, and, and the man comes to visit her from Iran, and they are settling their divorce while she is getting ready to marry a new boyfriend. During the very tense day, uh, Ahmad, who is the uh, former husband, discovers the conflicting nature of her relationship with her daughter, Lucy. And as he tries to sort of get close to uh, the daughter and figure out what's going on here while he's been away, uh, a very dark secret from her past is uh, revealed through their relationship. So it's a very taut family drama. It's got a great screenplay, an amazing performance from Bernice Bejot, which actually gave her the Best Actress Award at the 2013 Cannes Film Fest. And uh, it's just a great character study. So it's a little bit slow at times. It runs over two hours. But if you got the patience for this one and you appreciate good foreign films with excellent writing, I really recommend uh, The Past because The Separation was a fantastic film. And this one also looks at divorce, but from a sort of different angle. So check this one out. It's a bit of a hidden gem. And if you like foreign films, it 
is a must watch. Next, we're talking TV. David Duchovny is back. Californication season six. Now, season seven is a couple of weeks away from premiering, and that will be the final season. So this is the second last season. And Hank Moody gets up to all his tricks again, and he's got Runkle along the way to uh, share in the debauchery. I did find, however, though, I mean, I love the show. I love the characters. It got a bit repetitive in this one, where he just keeps trying to go back and get Karen, reunite with his ex, and he's still dealing with all his issues with alcoholism. He kind of goes to rehabbing this one for a little brief stint. Maggie Grace, who was in Law, um, has so we'll some episodes in this one. She's very good. Uh, but overall, I felt some of the new characters and some of the storylines were a bit reminiscent of seasons really? I had seen before. That being said, though, if you've watched Hank Moody on his journey through Californication through the uh, previous five seasons, you're going to enjoy this one. You're going to watch it. And it's a great prelude to season seven, which, as I say, premieres in a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, there he is uh, sneaking some uh, marijuana for him into rehab. Oh, they're always up to no good on that show. And finally, guys, we leave you with an ultimate classic coming to Blu-ray. It's been remastered for high def. Yes, the Coen Brothers 1996 hit Fargo. Have a look. I'm uh, Jerry Lindegard. You got the car? You bet. Brand new burnt umber Sierra. You want your own wife kidnapped. Her dad, he's real well off. So why don't you just ask him for the money? <laughs> See, these are personal matters. Personal matters? Uh, Just scary. amazing. I, I mean, it was nominated for seven wife. Oscars. It won original screenplay. Joel and Ethan Cohen picking up that award. Frances McDormand won Best Supporting Actress oh, this year, uh, that year. Terrible. Things go terribly awry when a small town Minnesota car salesman played by William H. Macy hires two thugs to kidnap his wife so he can collect a ransom from her wealthy father-in-law. Meanwhile, Frances McDormand, the local uh, police chief, is on the case. Launch the careers of Frances McDormand, William H. Macy, Steve Buscemi and Peter Stormare. It's got amazing writing. It's got beautiful cinematography from veteran Roger Deakins, and it changed the way we thought about wood chippers forever. So don't miss a homespun classic, one of the finest films to ever come out of the United States, Fargo, now on high def in Blu-ray in a beautiful new edition. There you go, people. I'm Thor Dykow. It's this week on Blu-ray and DVD. Check out all these wonderful titles. Tell me what you thought. Find me on Twitter at Thor Dykow. And we'll see you next week on BTVancouver.ca.